Well, here we are again, huh? I did say I would make this if enough people wanted it, and sure enough, here I am making this fucking video. Things are gonna be a little different this time, however, as I'm gonna be doing both the special weapon and the character tier lists in one video to avoid having a large gap between the two lists. Now, there are only 13 characters in Vigil 88 compared to the 18 of Second Offense, but we still have the good, the bad, and the just plain ugly. So let's get stuck into things with the special weapons. For once, Convoy isn't stuck at the bottom of the tier list. John Torque's special is the Base Quake, which is a large shockwave that surrounds John and pushes out any nearby opponents while doing damage. After the initial shockwave, the surrounding ground bends and twists, launching any cars into the air that were in the area. But down, that sounds really fucking cool. How can you call it the worst special in the game? Because I have a special hatred for specials with way too much knockback and very low whammy potential. Don't get me wrong, the concept is cool as fuck and it is very fun to use, but from a practical standpoint the damage doesn't actually hit unless you hit them with that first shockwave, and fighting against this special is extremely annoying to boot. Also, this is the only special that doesn't work mid-air, for obvious reasons, so you can get fucked over by a simple Gamma Swarm. Speaking of which... Man, I love me a good segue. Beeswax uses the Gamma Swarm special, which unleashes a small swarm of bees onto your targeted opponent and once they make contact, they'll juggle them upwards for several seconds doing minor damage. Honestly, this special is just kind of... boring. Unless you're close enough, your opponent can just outrun it, and up close it just kind of bugs them for several seconds. No pun intended. It does make it a hell of a lot easier for certain whammies like missiles, mortars, and cannon combos, but other than that, it's more of an annoyance rather than an actual threat. A trend you'll see for the other weapons in C-Tier. Similar to the Blazing Glory rockets, but a hell of a lot worse. Loki's special is the Scatter Missiles, which are heat-seeking missiles that launch into the air towards an opponent. Then, once above the target, they'll split into several smaller projectiles and fire down onto the target with very... poor accuracy. Which brings me to my major gripe with this stupid weapon. You could hit the broadside of a barn with all the projectiles this thing fires. Most of the time you'll get like 25% oh, of them to actually hit, unless you've slowed them down with other weapons or yourself. The latter not being a smart idea since Loki's one of the lightest characters in V8. Granted, the range is pretty nice, but that doesn't amount to much when the damage is pretty garbage outside of a direct hit. When it hits, it hurts, so you either gotta get in their face or hope the AI is being dumb. There's only one other special that can match this inaccuracy, but thankfully its damage output isn't trash. Convoy made it to the dizzying heights of the top of C tier. OG Convoy uses the Steel Belter, which fires one of three tires to track down and explode onto an opponent. While this is certainly a lot better than his second offense counterpart, it still isn't that great, but I don't think it's exactly the special's fault. Because this special is forced to roll around on the ground to track its target, unlike the two specials I just mentioned, it has tracking difficulties and will dart around a lot. And more often than not, the tire will not explode directly onto the target, but rather near them. Thankfully, it has a decent explosion radius, so you can still pick up whammies a hell of a lot easier compared to the scanner missiles. Still fucking sucks, though. <laughs> the original and the superior version of this special weapon. Dave uses the Invasion Special, which calls down several UFOs to batter the targeted opponent for several seconds. Now this is where Dave's Coltsmen actually get their special weapon from, however there's one key difference between the two. The Super Invasion comes down from the sides and more often than not will block most chances in a whammy. The OG Invasion, however, comes down from the top, making whammies with like rockets and cannons still very accessible. Still fucking hurts your ears though. Do you wish upon a shooting star? Well then have nine of them. OG Chassis uses the Gridlock Special, which fires nine light projectiles in a square pattern directly in front of her, damaging and stalling any opponent's hit. 
There are only three specials that can stall your opponent in this game and chassis just can't compare to the other two. While the damage output is nice, this weapon loses that damage the larger the gap between you and your opponent, meaning this weapon has max effectiveness only at a point blank range. Aside from that, this is a decent special weapon with good damage, firing time and ammo count, hence why it's sitting in the middle of B tier. Amazing how if you keep the same special weapon, you keep your same spot on the tier list. Sheila is using the same special she wielded in both Second Offense and Arcade, the Tantrum Gun. A 50 shot, fast firing, auto tracking cannon that does minor damage and knockback with every shot, while also knocking off your opponent's weapons. What I said about this weapon in the Second Offense tier list still applies here. This weapon is a solid all rounder with no real downsides and whammies well with most standard weapons. It's a real cunt to fight against in the Molo questline though. Kind of ironic how the Australian is also the pyromaniac. Sid Byrne uses the Breath of Fire, a cannon that lobs balls of fire at the targeted opponent, doing both burst damage and damage over time. This special is similar to Sheila's, however I personally rank it higher due to the higher burst damage done with whammies and the lower knockback rate. Yes, I'm really not a fan of knockback specials, it's kind of a theme at this point. It's a shame they butchered his special and turned it into the worst standard weapon in Second Offense. I personally like her hook more, but this special is probably better. Houston 3 uses the Death Ray, a weapon very similar to the standard Bruiser Cannon, but fires a beam of light instead. Now, I'm not sure if I've said this before, but the Bruiser Cannon is probably the best standard weapon in both V8 and Second Offense, so that as a special weapon is pretty fantastic. Good damage, great whammy options, and a fantastic fire rate all make this special weapon a top contender. You know what they say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Molo also uses his smog check like his appearance in both Second Offense and Arcade, which is a rear-facing weapon that puffs out a cloud of smog that damages and stalls opponents caught in it. Truthfully, this weapon is actually stronger than its Second Offense counterpart, because if you aim it just right, you can actually kill Convoy with only half a clip, while in Second Offense, it takes almost a full clip to kill a heavyweight character. The rest of the weapon is virtually the same, however, same clip of 40, same firing rate, and same time active. So if this is only the second best stalling weapon in the game, what could possibly be better than Smog Check? Lightning. You know what they say, Lightning beats Smog. At least in V8's case. Slick Clyde uses the White Lightning, which fires up a ball of light and calls down several lightning strikes to stall and damage your target. Honestly, this special is kind of fucking insane. High damage output, stalling effect, and it can hit anywhere on the map. But don't take my word for it, just watch this clip of me doing the Ghost Town level in my Clyde speedrun. It's insane, I know. Actually getting your special on some maps though is a pain in the fucking ass, so I guess it balances out. <laughs> this placing a boogie shouldn't really shock anyone. Boogie is the final one of three to use the same special weapon in all three installments of Vigilante 8, and his weapon is the Disco Inferno which targets a nearby opponent and hits them with several light projectiles, lifting them up and spinning them around with each consecutive hit. This special was strong in second offense, and it's strong here too. Easy to score whammies with, zero cooldown, and you basically render your opponents useless, which makes it the best special weapon overall. Well, if only a certain someone was an OP as fuck. Basically, Houston 3 special, just better. No, literally, that's all it is. It has the same ammo count, same firing rate, same functionality, but with a single key difference. Its damage output is double that of the Death Ray. 
This special is so broken, it's honestly no surprise that Why the Alien is the final unlockable character and only has a questline on the N64 version of this game. And in case you're wondering, yes, I did make an SS tier just for the mere fact this special exists. Well, we've hit halftime. Before we move on, let's have a quick showcase of all the special weapons in ranked order. Alright, well, this is the time I'm sure you've all been waiting for, the quote-unquote official ranking of the 13 characters of Vigilante 8. Who's up first for the chopping block? Gonna sting you real good. Kinda glad this dude died canonically. He's pretty trash. Beeswax is a disgruntled beekeeper who discovers that his bees have become irradiated, causing him to go on a rampage in his 1970s stag pickup. While Beeswax does have the third highest durability, that's pretty much his only good point. He's sluggish, easy to hit, and with a lackluster special, as previously discussed, there isn't all that much that's desirable about this crazy beekeeper. Go home, country bumpkin. The swarm is supreme. Go home, city slicker. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for takeoff! Wow, both coyotes that didn't return for a second offense group together at the bottom? Shocking, I know. Loki is a former pilot at the secret Site 4 that stored extraterrestrial flying objects. However, after an accident, they kicked him out and he now seeks the skies. It's been so long, in fact, that he even talks like a fighter pilot while driving his Glen 4x4 Jeep. Mayday, mayday, I'm going down! Loki's stats are fairly similar to Boogie's. His low speed and low durability, but high avoidance due to a small frame. There's just one problem, though. Unlike Boogie, his special kind of fucking sucks. Yep, <laughs> just blessed a Boogie. Over. You ready to roll the dice, bro? Only raising up two spots, thanks to his stats. John Torque is a gambler down on his luck turn vigilante after hearing about the reward money offered up for national terrorist Sid Byrne. John hopped into his 1970 Jefferson and hit the road. While his special may be the worst, his stats are fairly decent. Average speed and durability make John easy to drive and not so easy to kill. John's a classic example of a decent character being held down by a bad special weapon. Give me Wheel of Fortune or give me death! You gambled and you lost! The house wins! Hmm, since you show no intelligent lie! <laughs> hey, at least they're higher up than their coltsmen. Dave is a hippie who believes aliens are real and are mankind's friends. While he fights for the vigilantes, he doesn't seem to be directly affiliated with them and goes on the hunt for alien life forms in his 1970 van. While Dave is a little bulkier and slower than John, he makes up for it with his average special weapon, which, as mentioned before, whammies well, making quick work of any non-believers. Far out, man. Hey, my calculations have been proven co accurate. <laughs> Ain't nothing on earth can stop a convoy. The highest convoy has ever been on one of my tier lists. Convoy is a rough and tough cowboy who is the founder and leader of the vigilantes. He fights at his 1972 moth truck against Sid Byrne, hoping to bring him and the rest of the coyotes to justice. It's kind of shocking how much difference that fucking trailer from Second Offense makes. In Vigilante 8, he's less durable, but faster and more maneuverable than his Second Offense counterpart. Not to mention his special weapon is at the very least decent, which just slots him into the bottom of B tier. It's that beer gut just must make him stronger. I guess it had to be this way, Tenderfoot. Let's get on with the mission, hmm? B tier special, B tier character. Chassis Blue is an FBI agent sent out to investigate the auto skirmishes of 1977 and their possible connection to Omar. Driving her 1967 Rattler, she teams up with Convoy to put a stop to the Coyotes. Chassis Rattler has very similar stats to a Vertigo from Second Offense, boasting great speed and avoidance, however with weak armor. Chassis is fairly beginner friendly with her easy to control vehicle and simple special weapon, slotting her right into the middle of this list. Right along someone I view in the same kind of light. 
You have the right to remain silent permanently. Hey, let's get wild, okay? Yep, same spot for her too. Sheila is Convoy's rebellious niece and desperately wanted to help out Convoy with his newly formed vigilantes. Convoy rejected her request at first, but after building herself a 1974 Strider and proving herself, Convoy eventually gave in and accepted her onto the vigilantes. Sheila is more or less the same as her appearance in Second Offense. She has good avoidance and speed, but this time she has the weakest armor of any character in Vigilante 8. Thankfully, her special is just as solid, which makes up for her lack of durability. Hey, they can't hit you if you keep pushing them away. Maybe you're too old to be driving, Gramps. Get to the back of my bus, haha! <laughs> this version is certainly better than his prison bus. Molo has always been a troublemaker and looked up to the leader of the Coyotes, Sid Byrne. One day he stole a 1966 school bus and set out to find his idol. Rejected at first, Molo was determined to prove himself and eventually earned the respect of his hero. Molo is functionally the same as his second offense counterpart. This time around, however, he's the largest character in the game and has the most armor while keeping a poor acceleration. Most of Molo's strength comes from his special weapon, which is tricky to aim at first, but is quite strong once you get the hang of it. He also handles really well with a handbrake turn, despite being a fucking bus. School's out, so are you. Whoa, let's move to the ground. Having an actual questline for Boogie feels fucking great. Boogie was a small time crook who spent most of his time in and out of jail. However, he eventually teamed up with Sid Byrne after he called in a few favors. Gearing up onto his 1976 Leprechaun, he set out to deal some damage for the Coyotes. I compared Loki to Boogie earlier, so you should know what to expect here. A high avoidance and a small frame, however lacking in both speed and armor. However, he has both more speed and avoidance than Loki, while also carrying one of the best special weapons in Vigilante 8. I think that means he deserves a much higher placement, don't you? Huh, I'm feeling ten feet tall, tough guy. Is it getting hot in here? <laughs> this man's Australian accent fucking sucks even though I'm not one to talk. Sid Byrne is an Australian-born terrorist who lives for one thing, money. He was hired by Omar to destroy rival oil companies, and to do so, he created the Coyote Gang, humped at his 1969 Manta, and started to blow shit up. Sid Byrne has the best speed of any V8 character while still keeping an average armor, and as you guys know, mobility is my favorite thing in this game. Sid also wields a special weapon that does great damage and whammy's quite easy. Despite the bad accent, he's just about everything you'd want in a V8 character. Put another shrimp on the barbie. <laughs> Yeehaw! Here I come, hit! Yet another character to retain his position. Although he's a lot higher than the others. Not much is known about Slick Clyde's early life, despite being a playboy and a huge car enthusiast. Slick wasn't all that interested in the auto wars, but was forced into helping the vigilantes thanks to John and during which he discovers the lightning dispensing apparatus, which becomes a staple of his character in V8. Now this is off topic a little, but my father used to actually own an old Ford Bronco, and because of that I have a certain soft spot for Clyde's 1970 Clydesdale. Despite this, however, he's still deserving of this top spot thanks to his great stats and fantastic special weapon. Looks like you really stepped in it this time, Hoss. I may be half human, but I'm all woman. You may not like it, but this is what peak performance looks like. Houston 3 was the latest biobot created by Omar in late 1974, but was once a normal woman named Tanya. Ordered by Omar to help Sid with his destruction, Houston gears up a 1975 Palomino and gets to work. Houston has very similar stats to Sid, actually, while having slightly less speed, but makes up for it with more armor and more avoidance. The key difference between the two, however, is the special weapon. I'll take the death ray over the breath of fire any day of the week, as was shown in the previous tier list. Program complete, baby. Why am I doing this? <sighs> so it's probably insanely obvious who the top ranked character is by process of elimination and the previous tier list. It's kind of hard to knock pick this guy considering how stupidly OP he is compared to everyone else. So much so that he has to be unlocked last out of everyone and didn't even get a quest line in the PS1 version of the game, nor can he be fought against in arcade mode. Let the invasion begin! He's so OP I had to make a brand new tier. Why the alien is... well, the fucking alien. 
He crash landed on Earth and after learning information of the secret base from Dave, he set out in his repaired 1964 Luxo saucer. So yeah, this character is pretty fucking busted. He's the only one that can fly and he has both a very high speed and durability, a combination which means you can pretty much ram enemies more effectively than anyone else. Add this with the strongest special in Vigilante 8 and there's honestly no contest at all compared to the other characters. I was kind of tempted to just leave this guy out altogether, but he technically does have a quest line and he's playable in the PS1 version, so I'm basically obligated to put him in. Take me to your leader, so after the least shocking top pick reveal, we are finished with our tier lists for Vigilante 8. Where do I go from here? Well, who knows, there are only two games I really speedrun and with all the games on my plate, I doubt I'll be picking something up anytime soon. So I probably won't be making a tier list like this for quite a while, but I might do some new stuff with Second Offense, so we'll see how that turns out. Most of the footage you've seen here is both on my YouTube channel and speedrun.com. Also feel free to stop by the very small Discord server with the link below and have a chat about Vigilante 8 and other stuff with me and some others. Until next time.